<clears throat> so the way this is currently patched, I just wanted to cover a few things. So this VCO mod in, you have to do a dead patch like this. If you don't put a dead end patch there, uh, the semi-modular nature of the synth will have this LFO automatically routed to this tune knob. And the only way to break that default semi-modular patching inside is just to plug in a TS cable directly into VCO mod in. So once you've done that, then you can be more manual with how you're applying your modulation sources. So, you know, by default, on this specific synth, the Cobalt Expander, we have this noise out right here, but the thing is, you have to patch that somewhere. There's no default routing for noise out, so you have to put it somewhere. It's just a white noise signal. So, what I determine makes the most sense here is we have this LFO, <clears throat> we have this LFO right here as one modulation source, but we have LFO out one and LFO out two. So both of these are legitimate signals um, that have one attenuator, right? This volume knob attenuates the signal, the rate changes how fast the LFO moves, and then this switch here can make the LFO either a triangle or a square wave. And so if you want to have a version of this, LFO that's attenuated, you can send like LFO out two over to either this in one or this in two. And if you do that, then you can attenuate a lower version of the signal. But what I found is it's not perfect. <clears throat> it's not necessary to do that. Um, also, uh, this attenuator applies to LFO out one. Um, and not LFO out 2. LFO out 2, uh, if you do want that to be attenuated at all, you have to patch it in somewhere. Um, so, anyways, with this setup here, I know that most patches I personally like either white noise or pink noise. This amazingly has a pink noise generator as well. Um, we can take this noise out, patch it into N1, and then we have this N1 gain and out gain. Two, gain stage the signal. If you crank it up, you can get it to clip, or uh, dial it back and it won't clip, and you can just have this out gain be the wet dry of the noise applied to your signal. The out port here. Um, we do want that to go to VCF audio in because we want this white noise signal to go out to our filter. So that way we have oscillator 1, oscillator 2, oscillator 2 beat, and I'll explain that in a second. And then this noise signal going all into the, the filter so we can, we can mix those amounts. The useful thing... Uh, about this beat, VCO beat 2, this is kind of like a third oscillator. And so what this does is it will actually create a signal that's the delta between oscillator 1 and oscillator 2. And um, I, I think I closed it. No, I didn't have it up. The um, manual here explaining... It says you VCO beat or VCO2 beat, use this control to adjust the fine tuning between oscillator one and oscillator two. And so yeah, you can actually functionally have a third oscillator, but the third oscillator is not independent. It's based on uh, one and two, and you can tune it. So like I'll show you this here. So this is just VCO1. I'll turn the out gain for the noise sound off. So that's just one oscillator, right? And then if I add, I'll remove one and I'll add two. 
And now if I add one and two, so you hear that, that middle tone, like the, that, that's neither one or two. What that is, is That's VCO B2. It's kind of like a third oscillator in your tone. So that's how people can get some tones that are similar to a mini Moog because that, you know, the, the Model D, for example, is three oscillators. So we can functionally get three, three oscillators. Now, I cannot change the waveform of this, uh, and I don't know what it is because it's mixed in with all the other tones. So if I flip these all over to... Uh, a triangle, make this a square, and so I don't know if it's basically a, a mix of what the waveforms are of 1 and 2 and the pitch of 1 and 2. If you know more than me on this, let me know in the comments, I'd appreciate that. So, either way, very beautiful voices we have, um, and then I can add white noise in with this out gain, so. Now, I, I functionally have two different LFOs, an attenuated LFO, a unattenuated LFO, and I can, pitch, I can patch those to any patch point uh, control voltage, and then I also have, uh, in this current situation, a white noise signal. I could patch um, either uh, reverse out or this, this main out, because with white noise, it will make no difference if I have a reversed white noise sound, right? So um, both of these are legitimate noise sources. So if there was something that you did want to have kind of freak out, be modulated by noise, you could do that. So I know some people will typically put noise into like a sample and hold circuit. So this doesn't have a sample and hold, but if you did, uh, you have a noise for that. Um, so the, I suppose it, it could make sense to put noise over to like a waveform because we, we do have the ability to kind of sweep through the waveforms, which is pretty cool. Um, you definitely want to focus on bass sounds, ARP sounds, and lead sounds with this instrument, because it is monophonic, right? Uh, I've been able to get some very guitar-like tones out of this. Um, sounds that if I didn't tell someone it was a synth, they'd they think it was an electric guitar, like it really sounded like either an electric bass or an electric guitar. So, uh, pretty neat. Um, so, I'll just play a few tones and we'll jam out for a moment. And then, uh, yeah, let me let me know what you think. If you have a Cobalt Expander, let me know what you think about it. Um, if you have some tracks you're using it in, go ahead and link in the description. I'm sorry, uh, link, link in the comments and we'll talk about it. So, here we go. So that's what I mean with um, unattenuated uh, LFO. It's pretty wild. Um, you, you can't tame the amount that it applies, but with LFO out one, you can because this volume right here is an attenuator for that. So if I were to put that into frequency and, and do what I just did, right? <laughs> Thank you. 
see how I can dial it back. So if I put that into like waveform. That's another point I wanted to make with this is don't be afraid to not use everything you have. Some sounds might actually sound better if less is more. Like, I know Daft Punk uses this on some leads on um, a good handful of their songs. And, uh, yeah, they, they basically just use one oscillator in those instances. You know, they'll they'll be over... They'll use like a these more flicky sounds like this where you have a really high attack on the amp or the filter and pay attention to these decays because if you're used to like a full ADSR setup, this is not an ADSR setup. This is one of those things where the decay, if it's past 12 o'clock, is a release. And so uh, that's just the analog nature of it, right? This is uh, a recreation of a classic synthesizer. So don't expect uh, absolutely all bells and whistles. It's actually a benefit to have some limitations because then you get a very signature sound and so as you're working with what you have you'll end up getting tones that are uniquely true to this piece of hardware so uh, don't think of limitations as bad limitations are often uh, the concrete we build meaningful creative houses out of right so uh, what do they say? Necessity is the mother of invention, right? So if you find, for example, you know, the, the Crave is a good example of this because it has one oscillator, one LFO, one envelope. Uh, and so when you're dealing with those limitations, you get really creative about how you patch things. And then you kind of get some cool tones because of how that worked out. So yeah, either way, I uh, hope this is useful. This has been more to be technical uh, and less to be a jam. So uh, happy patching. <laughs>